Hi there, I'm in Boston today to try something kind of cool, something which is pretty unusual for America, but pretty close to my heart. So Boston actually has one of, if not the last fives court in the whole of the USA, and I'm gonna go check it out today. So what is fives? Well, insert clip. So fives is the English version of handball. In fact, it's a lot older than most versions of handball in the world. There are several different codes and they're all a little bit different. The most famous one is something called Eton Fives. That's a three wall game and it's based on what the side of Eton Chapel looked like. So there's buttresses, there's steps. It's a really weird, crazy game uh, and it's a total health and safety nightmare. Then there's Rugby Fives, which is the version that I played when I was at school and still play as an adult. That's basically exactly the same as squash, except that your court is made of stone and you're hitting round a little baseball with padded gloves. There's also something called Winchester Fives, which is like a hybrid of the two. It's a bit like a squash court, but there's a tiny little buttress in the corner, and that's an awesome game, especially for doubles. There are a few others too, and some which have died out over time, but that's Fives in a nutshell. Now, back in Abraham Lincoln times, Fives was brought over to the US by the first immigrants. In fact, Abraham Lincoln is said to have played Fives when waiting to be the Republican nomination way back when. Lots of Fives courts were built in America, normally in private institutions institutions or in the private schools and universities over here, but over time almost all of them has disappeared. Now it's worth noting that this happened separately to the other sport of handball, which we're also covering quite a lot, especially one wall and four wall. That was an Irish influence. But yes, if we go back to fives, pretty much over time most of those courts have disappeared. And the last court is at the Union Boat Club in Boston. <laughs> okay, at this moment I just need to interrupt this video because I'm just walking through one of the parks on the way to the court and I've just seen this. These are some pretty awesome looking one wall handball courts. Maybe a little bit short at the top but they're really colourful, they're really cool and I definitely need to have a go while I'm here. So it's hard to get on the courts at the moment because everyone is playing tennis because everyone needs a tennis practice wall. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick tour. Now this is Peter's Park in Boston if you're ever visiting. It's pretty cool. It's got lots of uh, basketball going on. It's got tennis with a big mural tennis practice wall. And obviously it's got the handball wall ball courts just behind it. Well, that was pretty random, but back on task, we're here to see five. So I've walked down the road a bit more, Boston's only small, and here I am at Chestnut Street. And this is where you'll find the Union Boat Club. So the Union Boat Club, there's two sites. There's one which actually has the boats by the river, and there's a clubhouse, which is just down here on Chestnut Street. So I'm gonna go in, and that's where we're gonna play some fives. So I think I'm here, it's quite unassuming, just a blue door with 144. Oh, hello. Hey. There we go. Union Boat Club, plus a cameo. Uh, right, here I am in the basement, and I'm just gonna go down some very dark, winding corridors. Uh, it says, I think the fives court is just down here. Oh. And here we go. So, here's the fives court in Boston. It's a very small fives court with a wooden floor and wooden walls. So this is gonna be a bit of a fun game to play. Uh, we'll definitely give it a go. And now I need to find my contact. So I'm still looking. Uh, you can hear creaky noises everywhere. It's a very old building, this. Here's a big squash court. There you go. That's a big, that's a big squash court. And here's the five score again from above. So I wonder what the rules are. There's no lines on the wall here. So I guess, I guess everything is gonna be in. This suits my game. I'm gonna over hit everything. So I'm now here on the fives court with Chip Elfner. Say hi, Chip. <laughs> Hello. So Chip, welcome. Tell, tell us a little bit about fives at the Union Boat Club. Fives at the Union Boat Club began in the uh, late 19th century 
some of the oarsmen, very few of the oarsmen thought that it would be a good way to uh, maintain their conditioning during the winter when the uh, Charles River was frozen. Uh, it took a few years to catch on. Uh, they used uh, three wall wooden courts that they put on a road outside, quite, quite heavily traveled these days, <laughs> but that was back in the eight, 1880s. Uh, the executive committee finally uh, granted them $400 to build a fives court in around 1890. <laughs> and they built a fives court in the location that we're standing today. Uh, I'm not certain what the materials were. Um, as I just uh, pointed out to Daniel, next door is a hardball squash court, uh, which is something of a relic these days too. Uh, and that court was built around 1960, and it was probably the finest exhibition court in Boston at that time. I suspect that this court was built at about the same time. The floors, as you can see, are maple. The walls are maple. You know, uh, it's indestructible wood. It's extremely hard. Uh, it plays very fast. Um, our game here is uh, dwindling. As I said in the article, we need a few younger players, but we're working hard to try and develop uh, a few this summer, and, and, and I can say that we're having some success in doing that. Is this the last court in the US, do you think? Uh, well, I just saw some courts on uh, Sunday uh, afternoon. I, if I had my cell phone, I'd, I'd, I'd have a picture of them. Uh, at Groton School. There are still five courts at Groton School. It's a separate building. Um, they don't look like they've had much use lately. Uh, they're filled up with furnishings and you know, various you know, desks from yeah. you know, dormitories and whatnot. Um, but that building is a freestanding building and the courts look like they could be played all if they have it playable. Are they, are they made of stone or wood? Uh, they're made of stone. Okay. So yeah, I mean, are those are courts that go back at least to the early 20th century. Yeah. And um, uh, Groton School was founded in something like 1885 and, and the Fives Courts were built pretty soon thereafter because the head of school had gone to Cheltenham School for a couple of years in England. Yeah. And came back and he thought the manliest of sports would be great for the young Americans <laughs> in his all-male uh, boarding school. So those courts still exist. There's also a court in Northern Maine you know, which uh, interestingly enough is a National Historic Landmark. Uh, it was built by the management of a paper company. And um, irony of all ironies, one of our members lives right next door to this building. He had it designated as a National Historic Landmark yeah. and he restored the thing. Yeah. And he and his son-in-law, who are both members of this club, play there from time to time in the summer. Oh, really? Yeah, it's oh, really, wow. it's on uh, Kizar Lake in Maine, which is uh, northwest of Portland. Yeah. Uh, it's we'll... about two hours drive, two and a half hours drive from Boston. Yeah, we'll need some photos of these. Yeah, uh, so in any case, um, yeah, that's about it with fives in the boat club. You know, we've uh, had a very active program over the decades. Um, it's been cyclical. Uh, now is kind of a lower point, I would say, but um, we're hoping to get uh, revive some interest uh, this summer. Yeah. Uh, we try and get some of the oarsmen interested in fives, but they're gigantic people. <laughs> they don't fit the court very well. <laughs> uh, tell me about the ball. So. Well, this ball, this ball is a very lively ball, and uh, I think it's uh, it may be French. Uh, we get them from England, but my suspicion is. It's French, it's got seams on it, and uh, it's almost like a little baseball. Um, the, um, the players here like it a lot because it's uh, uh, a lot easier on the hands <laughs> than the heavier ball. Oh, yeah, got yeah you've, got a, you've got one of the heavy ones, Dan. Haul that one out. This is the traditional one that we used to use, and you can that see the comparative size. That's the cliff, that's the yeah, old cliff. It's a cliff. That one is a real <laughs> rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The lighter one comes off the back wall. You know, the better players can hit these balls 30, 40, 50 miles an hour. Comes off the back wall like a hardball squash ball. You know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's a different kind of game than when you're used to. Okay, so here I am on the high school. I'm gonna have a go for uh, someone called Drew joining me for the game. Let's see what it's like. So this 
looks like the G6 or the Wiseman ball painted black uh, on these white cords. Uh, let's see how it goes. We give the server who's putting the ball in play three tries. Yeah. And if he um, if he fails to return it properly, side wall, front wall, if he hits the ten, um, you give you say uh, second chance, and then you know yeah. uh, then uh, one coming after that, and frequently after uh, if the person misses on the third try, we you know a gentleman's game we extend them the opportunity to. Uh, uh, try again, uh, and after that, after the fourth try, the point goes uh, to the uh, fellow who's doing the tossing. Okay. Uh, the game is scored. We score. We play 21 points. You um, you can only score a point uh, on your serve, and uh, good players can play 40, 50 points in a game. Um, the singles competitions usually um, in preliminary rounds in the club championship are 11 points. Yeah. Um, and then uh, as we get further on in the tournament, uh, the finals is always 21 points. We literally have to carry the boys <laughs> off after that. <laughs> yeah. there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's a Coke machine upstairs on the second floor of the uh, more Spartan <laughs> Union Boat Club that does have beer. So you can get a beer for 50 cents. No place else in the country can you do that. <laughs> okay, so 
Uh, show me that serve again. I'll try yep. and get one yep. back. Yep. Here you go. So you throw it front or side or and I do. There you go. Oh. Oh. Yep. Right. In the UK chip, I have, I have. You know, we, um, I, I, I've been twice. Uh, we, both times, we started at Merchant Taylor School. That's where I went to school. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great course. They yeah, we played course. at Merchant Taylor, and yeah. then uh, we played. We went out to Winchester. We played at Winchester. Yeah. We went to uh, Eton. Um, then we went up to uh, Yorkshire, to Little Hilladale Farm yeah. in Yorkshire, and played. Uh, uh, a day with the uh, Red and White Roses <laughs> Fives Club, yeah. which was absolutely fabulous, and uh, stayed up there. Um, and then uh, we came down to London and we played a test match at St. Paul's School. Yeah. And they brought in all the uh, big guns, and I think we might have done pretty well. Yeah. Uh, if we didn't win the match, we certainly won the social event. Excellent. What, what was it like playing on a bigger court and a stone court? Well, that wasn't so much different, you know, for, for us. Um, the thing that really we had trouble with were the buttresses, you know, for, oh, for, for ex Winchester. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. in Winchester, because believe it or not, the year that we went was just after the uh, Falklands crisis. Oh, really? And several of the fellows that we played with were Royal Navy. <laughs> and they come back and they were, you know, they were very excited about playing fives and they were good players and they kept hitting the buttress and the ball would go to the front wall. And of course we were both in the back yeah. expecting to defend. So we quickly realized we had to have somebody cover the front wall. Yeah, Winchester fives is tough. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so that would, uh, that was a bit confusing to us. And of course Eaton fives were the pepper pot and the step and all that. It was <laughs> yeah. just great fun. We had, we had a ball. It was a combination of students and uh, faculty, masters. Yeah. And we had, we had people, mostly from the boat club, but uh, it was a wonderful schoolmaster at St. Mark's School in Southboro, Massachusetts, and yeah. had a very active fives program for decades. <clears throat> John Kerry, you know, sort of led, led the American team. And he had another uh, master from St. Mark's named Rich Umicker. And he's become sort of the historian, kind of like Neil Butterworth, yeah. you know, in in UK, and become the historian of the game in this country. He's still alive. John Kerry isn't. John Kerry was uh, six foot nine, and he he played for the in for the Philadelphia Eagles right. at one point in his career, and he he kept the game of fives going at, at St. Mark's School. So when we got to um, Merchant Taylor, uh, Taylor, he. Um, he discovered he'd forgotten his shoes. And he sort of said to the head of school, oh, I need to go to, you know, go to town and buy some shoes. He said, what size are your feet? 16. He said, there isn't a pair of 16 shoes in, in all of England. <laughs> so he played barefoot for the entire week. It's yeah. just one of those things you remember from the, uh, from the trip, yeah. which was great. So uh, we had the royal treatment. You know, we went down to the... Um, uh, that year we went down to the uh, 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 Guild Hall, I think it was the Wax Chandler's Guild Hall, had a black tie dinner. Nice. It couldn't have been better. <laughs> People came from all over the country. You yeah. know, it was very exciting. So, And we've hosted a number of um, groups, you know, from England that have come over here, not, not within the last five years or ten years, yeah. but when we were very active, um, We'd have a group come every every other year, yeah. and it was great. They'd come and play fives, and then stick around for two or three weeks. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> the gloves. Yeah, the gloves. Oh, yeah. Let me just get the a normal glove while you get them. So, just so people know. Oh. Oh. 
So. Yeah, these are uh, <clears throat> these are well well broken in, as you can see. Uh, gloves that we use. There's an inner glove, um, and uh, when we use the old hardball, the real hardball, we used to uh, go to a local shoemaker here on Beacon Hill and have him cut us a piece of um, of uh, leather and oh, yeah. wrap it up in tape. Yeah. And uh, you know, make a little place to slip your hand through, so we could protect <laughs> protect our hands. Uh, we had a couple of uh, surgeons that thought they might want to become fives players, but they changed their mind pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, these are examples. You'll recognize some of these gloves. These are actually made in England, and uh, these are old mitts. Uh, the newer mitt, Exhibit A. I don't think this has been used. Um, but it was, uh, we found a fellow up in New Hampshire uh, who was a, you know, leather, uh, worked with leather goods, belts and whatnot. And, you know, he gave him this, this kind of design and this is what he, um, this is what he came up with. So he kind of emulated um, as close as he could uh, what you have. And, and uh, the only guys that use these myths both have died in the last couple of years, so <laughs> these are going to be... Yeah, I'll use them today. You can use them today to be authentic, <laughs> that's right, that's right. And I'm just going to try out these, these five mitts. <laughs> Let's see what these are like. but it doesn't hurt at all. These are some of the, you know, very early pioneers, you know, of the club. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, this, this fellow, this fellow was a governor of Massachusetts. He was Bobby Bradford. He had a, a brother, Eddie Bradford, who was a fives player. Yeah. And he was a offensive and defensive lineman at Harvard. And <laughs> that court that you just saw, the way he'd come into the court, he he'd jump the over the back wall, <laughs> barefoot, in a jock strap. And that was all. <laughs> so slightly intimidating. <laughs> Very intimidating. <laughs> yeah, he was a big guy, you know. Fantastic. So if anyone wants to play and they, they're visiting Boston, what should they do? They should just call the Union Book Club, you know, or, or at Chip Elfner at AOL.com. Um, I'm here to help them. We're, we're members of the UK Rugby Fives Association. We're in the book. Okay. I don't know how frequently the book gets published. It's every year. I don't know if anyone looks at it every is year. It, is it? Yeah. yeah <laughs> but there. we're members of that. We're in it. It's got the website, all that sort of thing. So I would say, you know, over the last three, four years, you know, we might have one or two people that come by and play. Yeah. And, what we, and usually it's kind of during the five season, which is really sort of in the fall during the winter here. Yeah. And um, it's a little easier to get people to come in and to play. And we have, you know, we'll have, you know, a, a refreshments. Yeah. And, um, you know, good fellowship and good games. And I think everybody feels like it's a good thing to continue. So I would extend a warm welcome to any, any people that are interested in this, uh, in this video, you know, to please come if they're in the U.S. and drop by and uh, have a game. Cool. Thanks very much, Chip. You bet. Okay, guys, so it's the end of the day. I'm back at home, and uh, I just want to thank everyone at the Union Boat Club for taking out so much time to introduce me to Fives and show me around the Union Boat Club, especially Chip, who was absolutely amazing today. Uh, also, Drew, who got on court with me afterwards, and we had a couple of games, and uh, then I went to the pub with a few people, a couple of Guinnesses, very friendly lot, really nice people, and everyone, if you're a Fives player, you'd always be welcome to go to the boat club and just have a go um but my thoughts about the fives court itself is that number one it's really cool that it's there uh, and it's something which cannot go so i know that some people want to build like a bigger doubles um squash court there don't do that keep the fives court it's heritage it's history and it's awesome however just like in the uk the guys are struggling with participation so young players are not really wanting to engage with the game and i can personally i can probably see a couple of potential solutions there um so first of all i know that top level fives 
would not work uh, in the current format. So the serve you do where you basically do like an Eton 5 serve. So you throw the ball up really nicely uh, to the returner and the returner will just smash it back at you. If you do that with top players, it will be 0-0 zero, zero for about 17 hours. So I think you might need to adapt that to make it a bit better. And the simple ways that that can be done would be either, you know, you do what squash does, put a line halfway down the court and you just do a normal rugby five serve that needs to go past that middle line. Uh, that would help get over the fact that the line that you have to hit it above, so the tin is quite low on these courts and the ball skids. So if you have to hit it deep, then people are probably going to return that serve and you can do a normal rugby five serve. You don't need to do a nice Eton fivesy serve. Uh, the other thing you could do is what you do in tennis when you're doing those nice rallies, you know, you know, one, two, and then blam, blast it on three to like get the thing going. But at least you're getting the rally going, throwing it deep and just going in there. The impetus then is still probably with the server. Um, I would probably say as well, so I don't know if I got it on video, but if you go upstairs in the Union Boat Club, they've got some amazing squash facilities. And, uh, you know, I would get some squash court fives balls and then you can play squash court fives uh, up there and then you can start to transition some of the uh, squash players and then take them on downstairs and go, hey, there's a fives court downstairs. Let's put on these gloves. Let's uh, use this ball and let's play something slightly different. The other thing you could do is um, play with a wall ball or a one wall handball uh, on the squash courts and in the uh, fives court itself. We know that's really good. Um, I've done a lot of games with Gareth Price like that and it's super fun. Uh, it doesn't hurt your hands, it's really fun, you don't need gloves. And again, that's one of those things which can just start to get people going before you then transition them into fives. Um, so yeah. I would say those are little things you could do. Oh, and the final thing is that Boston has a bit of a handball circuit. So, you know, Killian Carroll, he is one of the best four-wall handball players in the world, and he plays handball in Boston. So it seems like a no-brainer that you should tie those things up. There's also a bit of a one-wall scene here, and, you know, if you can get the one-wall guys to maybe transition across or things like that, I don't know how that might work, but there are other people hitting balls against walls with hands in Boston, and it seems silly not to marry that kind of thing up. But hey, uh, on the whole, uh, I absolutely love today. If you play Rugby Fives in the UK or even Eton Fives or anything, really, I would really encourage you to come across. Uh, if you're ever in Boston, just hit them up, give it a go. It's really fun. And the Union Boat Club itself, it's got so much history and so much heritage. It's such an interesting place to be. And you feel the history as you're walking around there and you see the pictures on the walls, you see, um, you know, the old school lock rooms and the old school gym um, and it definitely feels like a bit of history uh, and I, I, I really do like the fact that it is a club so there's a lot of other things going on as well I think in the UK one of the things that really stifle us is that you know we're only at schools for the most part so YMCA excluded and a couple of other places but it's basically only at schools and if it's only at schools, then it's only a fives club and you have to turn up to just play fives. You can't do anything else. Uh, it's much better when it's more of a sports club and people have a bit of a menu of things to do and it's more social and you go for drinks and you do other things. So even just being there on one night tonight, although not many people were playing fives, I really felt the social side of the club and I felt like it was a really fun, vibrant place to be that feels like a real community. And I do think we lack that in a lot of places in the UK. Um, but anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, Boston does have Rugby Fives. It's a slightly different version, but it's really cool. And uh, I encourage you to check it out. And I hope you've enjoyed watching this insight into Rugby Fives around the world. <laughs> <laughs>